Hey, podcasters, welcome to the Women in Podcasting Show. My name is Jennifer Hensel. I'm your host today. And guess what? Podcasters Kit 2021 is here. I'm so excited for this. So today I have a special guest and I'll be introducing them in just a moment. And we'll be answering some of your questions and chatting about Podcasters Kit. So please stick around for that. All the links mentioned in our episode today, including the one to Podcasters Kit, can be found in the show notes at womeninpodcasting.show. That's www.womeninpodcasting.show. You can also watch this interview there through our YouTube video on that page. So, okay, Podcasters Kit. This is the third year for the Podcasters Kit, and it's been very successful year after year, and each year it gets better and better. This year, there are 41 top podcasting experts from around the world, actually 42, including me. So from around the world who have come together to give you a stack, a stack of their best trainings, online courses, templates, workbooks, cheat sheets, programs, and downloads of all kinds. What's a stack? Well, it's a huge bundle or collection of amazing tools to help you start, grow, and monetize your podcast or message. Now, I want to let you know it's completely separate from the Women in Podcasting membership. I had a question about this, and I want you to know that, yes, the Women in Podcasting membership, in there we have online courses, workbooks, and tons of downloads and opportunities in the membership and so on, but the Podcasters Kit is completely different. It was created by someone else, and it's a completely different set of tools. In fact, 42 podcast experts have come together and contributed their top products into that collection. So Podcasters Kit is very complimentary to the Women in Podcasting membership. Of course, I highly recommend having both. How I'm involved is, well, I founded the Women in Podcasting VIP Club and show. Those are mine and from me. But for the Podcasters Kit, I'm a contributor, which means I've allowed one of my products to be included in the Podcasters Kit while it's available. So that's why you've been seeing me sharing it. In fact, I'm thrilled to have been invited back as a contributor again this year, because the reason I do these types of collaborations is for your benefit. It's not just for my benefit, but it's for the benefit of the whole community. For all of you out there, whether you're starting or growing your podcast, I want to help you expand your network and your audience as well. It's my heart and my mission to help you and I love helping other women podcasters and entrepreneurs. I love the podcasting community, and I'm always looking for ways to help you. As many of you know, I've been building communities for a long time, and collaborations are a vital part of helping a community to thrive and flourish. Now, here are two very important things to know. Listen to this part. Podcasters Kit is only available once a year, and you can only get it for one week per year. And guess what? This is that week. Those who got it last year can tell you the value is out of this world. And it's even better this year. Dan and Rachel have outdone themselves once again. It's filled with all kinds of goodies for growing and monetizing your podcast. That leads me to my second point. Podcasters Kit was created by Dan and Rachel Morris. These two create the most amazing offers just like this one so that you can get access to high-end offerings at the lowest price possible. They have a heart for helping podcasters and entrepreneurs, and they love community just like I do. That's why I resonate so well with them, and they've put a lot of work into putting this amazing collection together just for podcasters, and that's why I wanted you to know about it. So Dan Morris has been on the show before. If you want to know more about Dan, you can catch that episode. I think it's about four episodes back. And guess what? Guess what, you guys? I have Dan Morris, creator of Podcasters Kit 2021, back here with us today. He'll be answering questions about Podcasters Kit and how you can start, grow, and monetize your podcast. Here we go. The Women in Podcasting Show. Enjoy inspiring stories, interesting interviews, and powerful strategies from women around the world. 
Jennifer Hensel spotlights today's top podcasters, new podcasters, and expert guests. Get tips for leveling up your life, gaining visibility, growing your business, monetizing your podcast, and so much more. We invite you to support women in finding their voice and sharing their passion. It's all about women empowering women. Welcome, Dan Morris. Thank you so much for being here with us today to talk about Podcasters Kit. Yes, today is the day I'm very excited about. Barry. Yes. Now, we had some questions from some of our podcasters because you're also a podcasting expert, of course. You've been podcasting for many years. Indeed. Yes. And I was wondering if you could tell us, if you could start out by telling us your story of how you started in podcasting. Now, I know we've had you on the show before, so we've heard somewhat of your story, but if you could give us just a little bit more about how you, you know, really started podcasting. All right. So let's, let's say that I really started on the second one. That's kind of my, my belief in my head, because the first one, Rachel and I did 300 episodes. I think in 2013, 2016, we did this podcast called Amplify Today. And it was like uh, social media and tech news. And we did it because we thought we needed to. I'm just going to say that. Like we thought we needed to join and do a podcast. But I must say at the time, I really did just start it because I thought we needed to. Almost like feel like we need to do Twitter because people are there, right? Or I feel like we need to do Facebook because there's lots of people there. So I believe that my second podcast is actually where I started. It's where I, I got the, the epiphany, like the, the real feeling that, all right, I actually know why I'm doing this. And in the first one, Amplify Today, which crazily gets a lot of downloads still. And then I haven't, we haven't produced one since 2016. Uh, <laughs> Which is funny because um, it's, it was all about uh, social media and tech news. And we stopped it. I, I stopped because there was a moment in time where I thought to myself, how do I market our episode about Ello, this yeah. social media company that came and went? And like 90% of the stuff that we talked about came and went. You know, there was, like a, there was a shoe that connected to your phone your GPS thing, and you could connect it to your runner app. And then when you were running, like, and you needed to go right at the next street, like your right foot would buzz. (laughs) So you knew that you had to turn right at the next street. There was lots of these crazy things that were going on. But my head was like, how do I market the Ello episode? They're, they're gone. Who cares about that now? Why are we doing this podcast? That was my, that was my thought. So we stopped. And, and like I said, it still gets a lot of downloads. So not only did I stop it for the wrong reason, but I actually proved myself wrong. Like it actually still gets a lot of downloads and we should probably do it again. But I didn't get the epiphany for another two years. And that was in our Facebook group. Bob, the teacher, he wrote in the Facebook group that he was listening to a podcast while he was mowing the lawn. And it was about affiliate marketing. And he actually listed a couple of the things that he had learned from the podcast. And it, now I teach affiliate marketing. It was my group. Like, this is something that I teach. And it was like lightning struck me at that moment. Like, because I don't have a podcast about the thing that I'm really knowledgeable about, somebody else became the guru and the expert for Bob. Mm-hmm. Now, all of these people in our audiences they will tell you they don't have, they haven't had time to get to your book. You know, they haven't had time to watch your YouTube channel yet. Um, they will tell their wives or their husbands, I haven't had time to fix that thing or do that project. Yet. And it's true. We all have like limited amount of time. But amongst us are people like Bob, who you have to mow the lawn, right? You have to commute to work. Some of us have to go to the gym and exercise. So those people even though they have no time to read your book, like they will still dial in a podcast 
mm-hmm. while they're exercising. And they will be acutely aware of everything that you're saying because that's the only thing they're focused on in order to get through the six mile run. Like that's the only thing that keeps them going on this monotony of mowing back and forth on the run. Like they're actually tuned in listening. And so this guy or gal, I actually don't remember, was in Bob's ears. And when you're listening to a podcast, it's like you and that person are in the room. Mm-hmm. And they're talking right to you. So somebody was becoming the expert and the guru for Bob that day. Mm-hmm. And I thought, why? Why am I not? Why is that happening? Because I really liked podcasting. So what I, what I have found over these years and working with everyone is that most of the people that I sort of mention this, tell the story to, instantly in their head, they have this defense. A wall goes up. Like, I can't do another thing like where I have an episode a week forever and I have to prep it and I have to put it out and I have to market it. And, and I totally get that. But what I am saying is what if you put out a fixed seven episode series on the thing you're really smart about so that when someone is on their app and they're looking for, you know, how to manage houseplants and that's what they want to learn while they're biking, yours comes up. And you're the voice and they want to go read your book after and they want to hear you and they go to your site. Like like take the daunting away and just think, you know what? I could do seven episodes. I just threw seven out there. What if it's three, but I could do seven episodes on X Um, or there are some authors who have a 12 chapter book and they just do an episode on each chapter. It's the thing that goes with the book, but it's the thing they love. That's why they wrote the book. So I really want you to understand that there are millions of Bob the teachers out there and they're on road trips and they're on exercise and uh, like an exercise bike or they're bowing their lawn and they're pulling up something that they really want to get into for the next hour. Mm -hmm. And it could be you because right now it's probably someone else's voice that's being the expert in your audience's ears. Oh, that's amazing. And you know, when I started my podcast, I actually studied pot, studied podcasting for 10 years and then finally did my podcast when the pandemic came. But I'm kind of glad because the technology back then wasn't as easy. The technology is easier now, but there's just so many things to know. And this podcaster's kit, oh, you know, every podcaster starting out should have this kit. It is just the annual event for podcasters. So I'm so thrilled that you're here to talk about it. Now I have some questions. What I'm looking at is I've got my phone over here and I put a post yesterday in my women in podcasting Facebook group Mm -hmm. and asked them if they had any questions for you, Dan. Yes. So here is one from Susan Smith. And she said, I'd love some tips on getting sponsorships, uh, determining a price ideas for a pitch and where to find them, et cetera. And her podcast is Measure Twice, Cut Once. And so we've got all kinds of podcasters in my community. And the thing is, everybody, you know, there's business people, there's nonprofits, there's everybody in between hobbyists. And so the thing is, anybody can raise funds, whether it's for their cause or for profit for their business. And so I know I noticed there was someone doing sponsorships in the stack, wasn't there? There's actually two. There's an entire course on getting sponsors and there is a pitch template. That you can oh, use wow. when you're pitching a sponsor. So there's actually two tools. Um, but I will say that when you're looking for a sponsor, um, the smartest thing that you can think about is who has exactly the same audience as me, right? Mm-hmm. Like who wants to be in this audience? Now, you need to think outside of your industry. Because the sponsor isn't necessarily interested in your industry. They're interested in your audience. So if you think about your audience, who are these people? And maybe um, maybe you need to think about the audience that you really want, that you're really trying to attract. Because sometimes you get stuck with an audience that they got there for a reason that you didn't need them to get there. They're, they're just there. Maybe you gave away a $25 Amazon gift card. And everybody under the sun showed up to get it. And now you've got this mixed audience. Uh, But think about the audience that you're really trying to attract. The next 100 episodes are going to be like 
totally for those people. And then the next thing you have to do is think, okay, these people, they're X, that this is the kind of the demographic, however you want to describe it. Uh, and maybe it's something that you use, but think about how can I be of value to a sponsor? Like, what can I, what can I do? Now, the one thing is you can write a sponsor and you can say, I have this audience in this podcast and this is how many downloads that we get a month, um, which is fine. But what I, would, what I would rather you do is I would rather you craft a plan. Like, hey, uh, I know that you're a hair, hair powder company and you've got this great hair powder uh, and you're up and coming new. And this is what I would like to do for you. I have this audience who would probably love to hear your message. And what I, what I would be great is if we partnered together, because I would love at the beginning of every episode, I would love to say, this podcast is sponsored by you. And the reason that it's sponsored by you is because these are the things that I love about you. And then I would like to incorporate maybe one of your stories into one of my podcasts, like every third podcast, a story to go with that sponsorship. And these six spots that I would do for you over the course of the next month, if you would be up for it, I would love for us to join venture on this. And I would love to talk to you about how that would work. So now you've got somebody you love, you've explained that it's your audience and you've given them a plan they can bite. Like they can think, oh, I get that. I can see that. Because otherwise you're just like everybody else saying, I have a podcast, it's a bunch of women over 40 and we get 85 downloads a week. Yeah. I mean, great, great. Like who cares about that? Tell them what you're going to do to make their life better. Because you got to figure out what is your sponsor need, right? They need either sponsor, they need, they probably need sales. That's what they need. Uh, but some of them will tell you they need leads. But you know, you, you and I both know they need sales. They need to sell product. So help them figure that out. How can you help them sell product? And that's such a great point to focus on the value of your audience rather than the downloads. If we focus on those numbers, you're going to get less sponsor interest than if you focus on here's my audience and the plan of how you can be successful and make yeah. sales through my podcast. Right. So that is amazing. So, okay. I didn't realize that there's a whole course on sponsorships and yeah. about pitch letters in the stack. So just let's, before I go to another question, yeah. explain what the stack is, explain what a stack is and, and some of the top things that are in there this year. Okay. So I'm going to explain it to you, the listener, hello, listener, um, from the business side. Like, why do I do it? How does it work? Uh, so Rachel and I went to New Zealand a few years ago, and we were talking about Gary Vaynerchuk. And a few people in the room didn't know who that was. And I thought, hmm, how could that be? Aren't we all on the internet, the same internet? How, how did you not hear of it? Well, so it occurred to me that the internet is not necessarily the great equalizer. So on our plane ride home, now remember, we thought of this as a, like my goal was to make money doing this, right? That, that was my, my, my goal. So like, how could we create this product where we introduce our US audience to all our New Zealand experts and all the other people that we've met around the world and vice versa? That was what I thought. So then we thought of a summit. You know, a summit's okay, but to some degree, a summit, you have to be there on the 10th of October at four o'clock from four to six. Like you have to be, or you miss it. Uh, so then we, we came up with this idea in our head. And I, I know the idea existed before us, but and this was eight years ago. We came up with that, this idea of a product summit. What if we took a product from each of the experts that we met and we put that into a bundle? That was our thought. And then we realized, okay, that's great, but why would the experts care? Why would they give us a product? And we're like, all right, how do we do this? How do we make it win-win? Okay, wait, what if we took their best product and we put it in a bundle and we sold it just for a week? Because why would anybody give us their best product to give away if they're selling it, right? So I had to limit it. I had to say just for a week so that they would be like, well, and then I could say, but you have 51 other weeks to sell that. It's okay. And then they'd be like, all right, I'm willing to try that. And then I said, what if we allowed you to grow your audience? So when you, we, you gave us your product, we would send you the traffic, the, the, the people who were interested in that product so that there was like a good match. So now we had these 40 experts in podcasting, right? And they're excited because they're going to grow a new audience. And then we have 
all these people who are going to buy the product and they're excited because they're going to get 40 new products about podcasts. Like I'm going to help someone go from zero to a hundred. That's my goal. And then we thought in order to really make this good, what if we got affiliates? What if we got third party people, people who aren't necessarily, they just had audiences that would be interested in podcasting. What if we had them promote it and then we gave them the money? So the, so the affiliates would be like motivated by money. The, the uh, contributors would be motivated by the new audience. And then the buyers would be motivated by all the new stuff that they get. And then I was like, okay, this is a win-win-win product. Everybody wins. Everybody gets a piece of the pie. Everybody walks away successful. But most importantly, the buyers who, like you guys, that actually get the products, you get 41 products that people normally sell for $199, $299, $399, $499, sometimes $2,000 products that you wouldn't normally get. And then you can actually go from zero to 100, or if you're already podcasting, go from 50 to 150, right? So that, that was the idea. And we do that for one week a year. We actually do two of these. One we do in June, that's just for digital marketing. But the podcasting one, which is the one that I'm most excited about, um, is this week. And if you are interested in being that voice in someone's ear that's helping them, whatever it is, take care of houseplants, learn how to use email marketing, whatever it is, if you want to be that person, like this is everything that you need to know. And it's not really like that hard. Like for instance, this is a, I know it, I know you hear kind of an echoing sound um, because I'm in an echoey room because this is my wife's studio and my actual podcasting studio is the walk-in closet upstairs that has clothes hanging all over the place because the clothes, they absorb so much sound. I mean, it's beautiful. But I can't do these in a closet, right? So, so, but the podcasting, I just record into here. Um, I use GarageBand on my, on my Mac. And then there's some other tools that I use to make it sound rich and take out the echo. Um, but otherwise, the basics aren't that hard. So don't, don't think it's impossible. But then once you get into it and you're like, oh, I'd really like to know how to interview better. I'd like to know how to make money with this. I'd like to know how to... Uh, there's a vocal clarity class. Like, how do I get more out of my voice? How do I, how do I have a more authoritative voice? Like, what kinds of things can I do? Um, you know, there's like how to get on Alexa with your podcast. Just how to grow your podcast. There's all kinds of things that will help you. Um, but, but you, you are the basis, right? Your knowledge and a microphone. That's the, that's the basic part. And then if you use the kit, that'll show you how to get your voice onto the internet. So millions of people can learn what you know. Oh, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. There's so many amazing products in there this year. You guys do such a great job of bringing in so many wonderful people. And this week, it's only available for one week for purchase, yeah. but people do have, because I had this question in some of the other, I've been a contributor, I think two or three years now, right? With you. Yeah. And sometimes the question is, well, Oh, do I have to download it all within a week? You know, I don't have time. You can purchase it. You only have one week to purchase it. Yeah. And then you have a little bit of time more than that to, to download, right? Okay. Now from the business side, here's the deal that I make. So that makes sense to your, to those of you who need logic. Mm -hmm. I tell the contributors, look, I'm only going to sell it for one week. That's your only, you only have to worry about losing sales for a week, right? Because we're going to make sales with BC stuff. And then I say, but I need you to keep the window open to that product with a special URL or a special coupon code for 60 days. Mm -hmm. So in this case, December 11th. But that, that's even only half of it because let's say that you register for a course, right? Um, you only need the window to the course for like one minute to register for it. But once that December 11th goes away, you're already registered for the course. You don't need the window open anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so if you like, let's just say there's somebody's private Facebook group that you're joining and they're going to teach you something in the Facebook group. The only thing that I'm closing is the window to the Facebook group. So once you join it, like you're, you're in. It's not like, you, it's not like I can take you away from it. So the window is only open for 60 days. And that's because I don't want the contributors to like have more risk than that. 
Because, you know, we're basically giving like a free hole into their site to get their product. So I don't want it to be open forever, just 60 days. And then the other thing is, if you think about podcasters kit like a salad bar, I mean, sure, there's 41 things, but if you already have a podcast and you've already know that part, you don't need the how to start a podcast. Like you don't need that product. Um, so I want you to really grab the things that you need, that you can ingest, that you can implement, and then go on. So for instance, if you had two products and somehow you made $400 just from those two products by starting the podcast and getting a sponsor, well, $400 is more than the $47 it costs for for podcasters kit. So that would be a win. That would be a business win. You spent 47, you made 400. So if you think about it that way, like I go through the salad bar, it is not a win for me to put beats on my salad. It's not, not a win. No, that is the <laughs> worst possible thing. Now, I also do not put cottage cheese on my salad. It's on the salad bar, but no, I'm not kidding. You. That is not a win. I realize that I paid for it, but no, I do not. <laughs> So get in, find the stuff that will really make your life better and grab them. Don't get overwhelmed. You don't need beets or cottage cheese. <laughs> Just get the stuff that's going to make you awesome. Yeah, there, there's, there's startup products in there. There's how to grow your podcast, how to monetize your podcast. There's everything from A to Z no. about podcasting in the stack this year. Yeah, there's um, templates for agreements for uh, like, if you have a guest, here's the, here's the media release agreement. You agree to be on the podcast and I can use your name and whatever. Um, there's agreements. If you have a co-host, there's a templates for emails. Here's the email templates. Like I got that's mine. Email. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, I got, you know, that kind of stuff. Like all that is, is part of this package. Yes. Yes. It's so exciting. And you know what? One of the main thing is, and you know this, Dan, is that in podcasting, one of the best things you can do is make a lot of contacts that have to do with your audience. So this is like a vault of all the best podcasting contacts. If you're looking for guests, if you're looking to be a guest on podcasts, this is a package that you should get. You should get this bundle. You should get this podcasting stack, the podcasters kit 2021 and dive in. There's just so much. I am overwhelmed with how much you've got going on in there this year. So I just have another question from one of our members. I'm just going to bring up another question from one of our podcasters in the women in podcasting group. Let's see who have I got here. Kimberly, Kimberly Fine D. Simone. I hope I pronounced that right. How can we engage listeners, get them to our website, get them to comment or give feedback and input. So more engagement with the listeners. Do you have something like that in the kit? Can you think of anything yes, else? The top there, of your head? Are, there are two engagement, how to create engagement products in the stack this year. But I will talk to you outside of those two things. There is a podcast that a friend of mine puts on how, and it's not called this or that. It's called something else. And it will come to me any moment. And they, their podcast is about um, which is better, hot dogs or hamburgers which is better, Batman or Superman, right? You get the concept, right? Well, they have a Facebook group that is alive every day. People are throwing in their ideas and then debating the ideas in the group. To me, it's crazy. Like, it's almost, it's, you know, my wife, Rachel, she runs findingjoy.net and she's got 800,000, 800,000 fans on that page. And her goal is to get like a thousand likes and now that's kind of like her goal when she writes something. And the reason that that goal exists is because all 800,000 people that are part of that are fans of Rachel's page are moms and not any mom. They're moms who have resonated with the way Rachel writes. So she might write about an anxiety moment that she's had but she always ends it with some uplifting message. So some people, there are people out there that are a little bit uh, darker or sarcastic, or that's just not their thing. They don't need this little uplifting message. Um, but Rachel hasn't wavered from that. She's been that kind of person for 10 years. So that kind of person means every person who doesn't really care for that, who's a more sarcastic, more, I want, I want to drink my wine and smoke it in my cigarettes kind of mom, like those people have already kind of decided there's other people for them. 
And then the people who really love what Rachel writes, they've decided, I'm in, I want to be part of it. So now there's 800,000 of those people. And it's because um, she hasn't really wavered about who she is. Like anything that she puts out there, any quotes, any books, they're all kind of like that. So she is her own filter. The same way that Howard Stern is his own filter. If you listen to Howard Stern, you are either intrigued or you're like, you're out. I don't want any part of that. That's not me. I don't need to listen to that on the radio. So if four out of 100 people like Howard Stern, 35 years later, he's got a million fans. And those million fans will engage. If I go to a U2 concert and they start playing even better than the real thing, and I start singing at the top of my lungs, I can look around and guess what? So is everyone else. But if I go to Applebee's and they play that song over the loudspeaker and I start singing at the top of my lungs, I'm the only one singing at the top of my lungs. <laughs> because we're all at Applebee's for a different reason. Like we're not there to all enjoy you too. Like I might like the music. I might go there and sit at the bar because I love the music that they play. Other people might just want the baby back rib special. You know, we're there for a different reason. So if you really want engagement on your podcast, then make sure that you're marketing the things that you say attract the kind of people that you want, because those people need to be amongst like friends. Howard Stern fans do their thing together. YouTube fans at a YouTube concert, they love being there and singing because everyone else is singing. No one feels out of place. So everything that you do, make sure that it filters out the people you don't want and the filters in the people that you, you want. And then you must give them a home. You must have a place for them to engage. Otherwise, how can they engage? On Twitter, on Facebook, by email. Like you have to give them a place. Otherwise, what are you expecting? Them to cheer at home, right? Then how do you know that's happening? And then like, for instance, I just said email, but if it's just email, then you need to ask for them to reply or how do you know if they're cheering? So make sure that you're inviting the right people and then you give them a place to go celebrate. Oh, that's amazing. I know we're both all about building community. That question was from Kimberly of Advancing Women Podcast. So nice. thank you for that question, Kimberly, because it is so important to build a community around your podcast and that's how you're going to get engagement. And so Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, all the places where you can create a community. Some people have it on WhatsApp. Now Clubhouse, all of these different places, you can create a community and you don't have to do all of them. You can pick the ones where you think your audience are and yeah. connect with them there, right? And just be consistent in connecting with your audience. You remember um, back in the old days when there were radio shows, um, radio shows didn't really have a place, but like the ones that I listened to, like Bruce, Bruce Williams that would give advice, they at least had an 800 number where you would come in and talk. And you could hear other fans like asking questions or talking to Bruce about their whatever it is that they were. And you could identify yourself in those other people, people's words. So the show itself became the home for all of us. We all heard our own opinions in the calls of other people. So what you have to figure out how to do that. How do you make sure someone feels like they belong? Even if you have to sell a shirt that people wear that says, you know, advancing women is my thing or like whatever your, whatever your moniker is, like they need to feel it. They need to be able to show it. They need to be able to see other people believe the same thing. Oh, you know, merch is a whole different topic too. I thought I saw someone who had printables. Oh, uh, yes. There's yes. In the monetizing section, there is one about selling your own products. This is all it's about. Uh, one about using uh, joint ventures, one about sponsors. So there's five or six different ways to monetize that are illust that are that are in the kit for sure. Uh, there's obviously more. I'm sure there's a hundred ways to monetize. Um, I'm a huge fan of joint ventures. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Energized Living Today. Uh, it used to be a Tumblr Summit, but podcast. Uh, what Cindy does is she, she. This is like a new age podcast. So did the sun set right behind me? Yes, <laughs> quite the glowing disc behind you there. <laughs> so what she does is she's new agey, tapping, uh, crystals, uh, meditation. So she brings on guests who have some expertise in that realm. 
and they her filter is they have a two hundred dollar product, um, and then they they talk about that particular thing, meditation or whatever for uh, the hour, and then they sell that guest's two hundred dollar product for a hundred dollars, like it's half off during the show, and then she and him split, and she's got a multi six figure business and she's had it for at least eight years doing that. That's a joint venture model. She brings on someone, they sell that product, then they split the money. And I mean, it's fantastic. She's got, shoot, I think she might have a million people on her email list at this point. But um, I love that model. I mean, it's a cool model for what she's doing. So there's a lot of different, a lot of different ways to monetize. You can combine them. You could do that. You could do affiliate marketing. You can use sponsors. Uh, you can sell your own products and your own merch. Um, all those things are viable options for sure. Yes. It, I mean, podcasters kit, podcasters kit has everything you need to go from starting to growing and monetizing your podcast. And we have a couple other questions from Roberta and Retea. I, I hope I'm saying that right. What would you wish you knew when you were starting your podcast? I wish I knew that being on iTunes and Google podcasts is not enough. I wish I knew that. I, I think I, I definitely, when we did Amplify today, I didn't understand that all of the automation that Libsyn or any of your hosts give you in terms of if you upload your podcast, they'll deliver it to all these different places. I relied on that in my head. Like, oh, good. I use Libsyn. They deliver it everywhere. I still use Libsyn. I like uh, but they don't deliver it, nor should they. It's not, it's not their job. So let me just give you an example. And this is going to be the greatest example you've ever heard. How's that for a statement? <laughs> okay. There is a company called Audio Burst, and they're out of Israel. And this team, they are app developers. And they came up with an idea. They figured out how to put an app inside an app. And at first, I'm like, well, what does that do? Well, they had a love for podcasting. So they decided, what if we made a podcasting app that could go on other people's apps? Now, you may have heard of the Calm app. Calm has had a million downloads, at least. They have at least 100,000 reviews on Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you are a user of the Calm app, then there, you can click on a button for meditations. You can click on a button for music you can click on a button for like things that you're supposed to tell yourself every day i don't know what those are called like you know i'm good enough or something affirmations uh, yeah but you could also click on a button for podcasts oh and the podcasts are brought to you by audio burst hmm. so if you don't register your rss feed with audio burst then you can't be found on the call map wow now, they are so gung-ho and their team is so like driven for success. They've done all the uh, like gone through all the models of getting funded and they you know, got like, A funding and T funding. They've got millions of dollars. So they went to Ford and Chevy. And they're like, what if you had a podcast app in your in-car stereo? So starting next year, all of the new Ford and Chevys are going to have a podcast button that's served by audio burst. So if you're not on audio burst, you can't be found in there. Wow. So there are places like that. And there are lots of places like that, that if you are diligent um, and you really, you make it like a thing on your checklist every third Friday, I'm going to go figure out the new places that I should probably submit my RSS feed. Then you're going to be found in more and more places than you are, are now, or if you just rely on Apple podcasts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the biggest mistake that I think we made in the beginning was I relied on others and their technology to distribute what I was doing. And I've learned since then that I can't rely on others. I have to use others and then go out and mine my own success. Mm, those, that's a great tip. That's good to know about that particular one. I remember when, when Amazon came on a few months ago, when was it? Yep. Earlier this year? later no. last year. And my numbers went way up when I added Amazon. And, and sometimes these things take a few minutes or a little bit of effort. 
to get going, but it's worth it because you're going to get a whole new audience. Yeah, there's another one called IVFM, IV.FM, and it's trying to become the Google for podcasts. Oh. So you have to go to IV.FM and and like register your RSS feed to be part of their network, but they're trying to create a search engine for podcasts that actually like listen to the podcast and hears what's inside of it so it can serve up results based on the audio versus just based on the title and the text. Um, and if those guys are totally focused on that and that's what they're working, like you need those people on your team. So once you give them your RSS feed, then basically they're working out there trying to make a better search engine so you can be found. Um, mm-hmm. So if you just, if you really just rely on your host and then maybe what you see in some Facebook groups, um, you, you just won't be as many places as you could be. And not only does everybody want to build a community around their podcast. Really, if you're a podcaster or you're a wannabe podcaster or you're a podcasting guest, it's great to be part of the podcasting community. And one of the best ways to do that is to join Podcasters Kit because the connections that are made are just incredible. Some of the joint ventures that happen afterwards, and you encourage this between all of the contributors, between a lot of the purchasers that happen afterwards, and you facilitate a lot of those connections Dan, and I appreciate that so much about you because I have a love for creating community as well. And all of those connections are made by jumping into an opportunity like this. So you can get the link to Podcasters Kit 2021 on inspiredinfluencers.com in our show notes. You can go to womeninpodcasting.show for the shortcut for that. So Dan, do you have any closing remarks about Podcasters Kit before we wrap up? Well, one of the commenters was from Advancing Women, right? Advancing Women Podcast, yeah. So the idea that I help, I really try to help the, the contributors, like meet other contributors, create joint ventures. Like the whole idea of advancing women, what if one of your things to create engagement was to create a place where your network could meet each other and support each other and then create joint, joint ventures inside of your podcast audience. Like if you want to actually create engagement, maybe you need to create a reason for it. So just when you were saying that just now, I thought that would be a good tool for her is to create a spot where those people could help each other. They could help each other with finances or, and in fact, in Podcasters Kit, there's a product called Podcast Mastermind Triad. And this is put on by Kelly McCausey. And her idea is, she takes people that come to the mastermind and I think there's three days and then she separates them into groups of three where one person talks, one person helps and one person listens and then they rotate. Um, And it's all about podcasting. Uh, So those three people help each other. That's like one of the steps. But if you actually participate that in that, maybe the act of participating in it and seeing how that works would be something that you could use to create engagement in your own podcast, just the, just the concept of it, because she's using people to help people. And maybe that's what you're put on earth to do with your podcast is, and you just have to figure out how to take it out of their ears and put it in real life. Uh, so I would say everywhere you look in podcasters kit is an opportunity for you to grow. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So you can get the link to Podcasters Kit 2021 on womeninpodcasting.show. Thank you so much for being here today, Dan. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. 